does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another video continuing the season at 28 Diablo 3 build up material. This is the UE T16 destruction build. Uh, a lot of fun. It gives you a nice break from playing Gears of Dreadlands and left clicking every four seconds to refresh your momentum stacks. Lots of fun, very nice, big AoE coverage, uh, and certainly something I'll be using to farm at least some of my keys next season. Uh, before we do jump in though and go through it, thumbs up always brightens my day, uh, and subscribe if you are interested in Diablo Season 28, we'll have plenty more Diablo 3 content on the way. Right, we've covered this already in a GR Speed version, so we're not going to go through all of this. Um, the TLDR basically is that multi-shot has been significantly buffed, six piece which used to do 350% damage per point of discipline in your orb now goes all the way up to 1700 so a really significant buff makes flattening t16 very very easy uh, in terms of usual multi-shot modifiers yangs obviously you want to get yourself one of these crafted primal ones no problemo pretty easy to do uh, and that will give you big damage and a big multiplier dead man's legacy of course is the multi-shot quiver so we go for this again just for the extra damage now, similarly to the GR speeds, we've got the Syndicate in the cube. I've put Mage Fist on the character for a little bit more fire damage, but by all means, this could come out. So you could do a Leorix if you wanted a bit more resource. Um, you, there's maybe something else you could do. You could maybe drop your Gold Wrap and do a Crimson's setup if you wanted for a bit more damage, uh, not the indestructibility of a Gold Wrap, but with the toughness of the... Crimson's you'd probably be fine. So again, similar to the God DH, there's lots of, uh, of ways of doing this really. Um, but what we have put, again, similar to the God DH T16 build we did the other day, uh, we've got an Echoing Fury in the cube. Increased attack speed, increased move speed, uh, which is very nice. Again, for all of my T16 builds, I like to rely on the Stone of Jordan, because it just gives us that consistent damage. As long as we match the element from this, the element from the Bracer, and the element from the Necklace, we get a pretty big damage mod. It also comes with a bit of max discipline, uh, which obviously for the UE build uh, synergizes quite well, so that is pretty good. Gold wrap for indestructibility, we've got the Boon of the Hoarder for the gold, uh, the follower obviously has the pickup radius with the avarice band and all that kind of stuff. Bane of the Trap for a bit more damage, Zai Stone of Vengeance for a bit more damage, and then we're working in the, the Wazashen Arm Guards because multi shots got such a wide clear, uh, wide air of effect. This has probably got better uptime than on a lot of builds uh, because you are hitting stuff. Working in the last new ring, again, this is a really bad one. It's got the 1% chance to fear on hits. If this was 5%, we would be getting that 60% move speed more often. Uh, there is another ring that I haven't bothered to farm on the season because I just can't face doing solo bounties, but Pandemonium Loop also has a fear on hit mechanic. So potentially what you could do is put... Um, put either the Stone of Jordan or one of those rings in the cube and then basically where the six pieces of the UE set, you would lose either the really nice benefits of the Stone of Jordan in terms of the elite damage and the fire roll, or you'd lose the chance to fear on hit, but you could eke out a slightly higher um, fear on hit, I guess that way, but probably not worth it. Uh, what else have we got? I think that pretty much is the gear. Skills, again, very similar to the GR speed build. We're going fire rune on multi shots stick any generator that you wish in. Uh, we've got Shadow Power, Shadow Power, Shadow Glide, 30% move speed on activation, really nice. Smoke Screen Displacement, 100% move speed on activation, really nice. Tactical Advantage for the 60% move speed whenever we pop either of those. Uh, Perfectionist knocks Discipline cost off these, which is nice. We will spam the potion repeatedly looking for the resource pylons um, that will basically give us almost perma resource, which is really nice. But it still helps the perfectionist, I think, to get going. Uh, obviously, with the follower having Gloves of Worship, if you do any key farming for any period of time, you'll be absolutely golden for resource, I'm sure. Companion, Ferret Companion. This is just a really cheesy way to get a little bit of extra move speed. Absolutely not essential. Any of these things you could pick. You could go back Companion for Hatred 
wolf companion for damage um, boar companion if you wanted resource if let's say you weren't taking a gold wrap but what the hell 10% move speed will take it vengeance rune on here I don't think matters either again because we're indestructible with gold wrap we may as well pick up the hatred uh, but dark heart would be fine as well for damage reduction uh, ambush flattened stuff at above 75% health synergizes really well with the dead man's legacy and again at hot pursuit just for a little bit of move speed uh, in terms of how UE works, you just go in and you don't really need the generator. Um, it's, you know, I guess you could maybe swap this off for another skill. Uh, I haven't really thought about it too much. But all you do is you right click, stuff melts, and you pop your move abilities and run around really, really fast. Aside from that, your pet picks everything up for you now. Uh, so DBs, items, they get also salvaged. The only thing you have to stop to pick up is legendary uh, item drops. And sometimes you have to be a little careful, you hang around a little bit just to make sure that the pet will actually pick up the items off the floor, pick up the death's breaths. If you whiz past everything really, really fast, I'm not sure the radius on the pets is big enough to actually grab everything, um, but it is still pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun to play, which is great. Uh, it's not the starting set, so it will take a bit of setup, but I think it's worthwhile doing because, um, as I say, my hand gets a bit sore when I play Gears of Dreadlands repeatedly, so I think having this as an alternative is going to be nice. Plus, it's nice to look at pretty multi-shot firing across the screen. Um, I am simplistic. I do like pretty things on the screen. Um, that's why I like Meteor on the Wizard so much. Right, so that is the UE T16 guide. I will probably set this up on the season at some point, so maybe we'll do an adjustment. Um, maybe we'll make a bounty build with Crimson's in, something like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to farm bounties next season. Natalia's, again, is going to get reworked. I know I keep saying this. At some point, we'll get patch notes. At some point, they will say exactly what is happening with Natalia's. Uh, and it may well be that Natalia's is the way to do keys, simply because you can do the spin to win like the Gears of Dreadlands, but you don't have to refresh momentum stacks, you just simply hold down a button and spin around. Um, but even then, that might get boring, so it is nice to be able to multi-shot our way to some T Torment 16 victory. Uh, my follower is really poorly set up because I just can't be asked. it's the last day of PTR, and I'm lazy, but in theory, on the season, you want to try and work in Gloves of Worship for those shrine benefits, uh, you want to make make sure you're getting a Sage's set for the, not Sage's set, Kane's set for the extra keys. Play every time, of course. Nemesis Braces, of course. Token of invulnerability, of course. Uh, the skills, I don't think really matter. Uh, I've got Inspire on for Hatred, but like I don't think it's making any difference. So Cheat Death could be a way to go. I kind of flick between them depending on whether I'm needing resource. Again, with the Altar of Rights, we've got resource on Crit, so... We should be good for resource, um, so yeah, maybe maybe cooldown uh, cheat death is is better uh, because obviously we're not taking it here. But for, for key farming, cheat death because we don't lose our pools of reflection next season. Uh, I'd be surprised if you see it in any torment sixteen build because you may as well just pick up some more utility, damage, move speed, whatever it is that's going to do you better than actually uh, the cheat death because these thing the pools just won't drop, which is kind of nice quality of life, I guess. Right, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed multi-shot melting the screen. Uh, I'll be back with some more videos soon. Take it easy, guys. Peace.